Hey guys, this is Justin again with the Elite Group. Been in real estate myself over 15 years, have sold and closed uh, over a thousand transactions, either bank repos or short sales. Uh, in this video, what we're going to be doing is answering the most common question that we get, which is can the bank come back after me for the difference of what I owe in the property and what they ultimately end up selling it for during a short sale. Now, the way that you're going to hear brokers refer to that terminology, and the same with the bank as well, is known as a deficiency judgment. And there's really three main ways to avoid having uh, the bank come back after you for a deficiency judgment. We're going to discuss all three in this video. And the first is SB 931. The second is purchase money loans. And the third is negotiations. Now, with the SB 931 law that went into effect January 1st of 2011, what it states is that the bank on the first lien cannot come back after the borrower for the difference of what was owed on the property and what they ultimately ended up selling it for if they agreed to do a short sale. And what's great with this new law is that it does not matter how the loan that you have against the home originated, meaning you could have used the loan to buy the house, you could have taken and refinanced the loan and pulled out you know, $100,000 and went and had good times in Vegas. Um, doesn't change the fact that if the bank agrees to do a short sell, you don't have to worry about them coming back after you for the difference on the first. Um, the second area that is a key component is whether or not your loan is a purchase money loan. Um, now with purchase money, what the lenders are defining as purchase money is the loan that you took out on the home when you originally bought it. So let's say five years ago, you bought the home for 200000 put 20% down, you have a loan for 160000 and you've had that exact same loan for the last five years, you haven't refinanced it, you haven't pulled out equity. That loan would be considered purchase money. And within the state of California and a number of other states in the union, California is considered a non-recourse state. So if the lender elects to foreclose on the property, they cannot come back after the borrower for the difference based on the fact that the loan was a purchase money loan. That applies to first, seconds, or thirds. So if you did like an 80-20 loan as an example, Again, if it's the same loan that was taken out when you first got the house and the lender chooses to foreclose, they cannot come back after you for the difference of what they lost on the home. Third area that we're going to discuss in the last is negotiations. This is where hiring the right short sale broker becomes you know, a big, big deal. Um, your broker has the ability when they're negotiating the short sale regardless of whether you're in the state of California with the SB 931 law regardless of whether you have three loans on the property and regardless of whether it's a purchase money loan, to negotiate your approval letter on the short sell in such a way that the bank basically lets you off the hook with the deficiency judgment. We refer to it as you know, removing the deficiency language from the approval letter. And it's absolutely key if you're a homeowner because you don't want that hanging over your head you know, as you go forward the next few years and look to purchase down the line. So. If you're hiring the right short sale broker, they definitely can negotiate in such a way that on the first, the second, and or the third, that with the agree of them doing a short sale that they are going to let you off the hook and not seek a deficiency judgment. Now, if you guys are upside down, if you're behind on your payments, you know, a short sale may be a very good option for you. What we've done is we've put together a 10-step formula to help you successfully close your short sell. Um, what most people don't realize is last year, of all the short sales that were initiated, only 40% of them actually closed successfully, which is you know, just a terrible number. But by doing some key things right up front, and we discuss all those things in these, in these other videos and in these 10 steps, you definitely can improve your chances to well over 80 or 90%. So please go to our website, it's www.easyshortsellprocess.com. Again, it's www.easyshortsellprocess.com. Hope this video has been helpful to you guys, and uh, best of luck to you in the future.